Fetal circulation. The double loop circulatory system is modified in the fetus. The main reason for this is that gas exchange does not occur at the lungs and nutrients are not consumed by eating. In this view of the fetal circulatory system we should see some familiar structures. The lungs, the liver, the vena cava returning blood from the body cells, the aorta delivering blood to body cells. There are also some modifications. There are four major modifications in fetal circulation. One is the foramen ovale, a hole in the septum between the right and left atrium. The ductus arteriosus, a connection between the pulmonary arteries and the aorta. The ductus venosus, which we'll discuss in a moment. And of course the umbilical vein and the umbilical arteries. Let's follow the path of circulation in a fetus. Starting at the placenta, the maternal blood vessels deliver oxygen and nutrients to the fetus at the placenta. These materials diffuse into the fetal bloodstream. Wastes diffuse out of the fetus's bloodstream and into the mother's bloodstream. The blood returning to the fetus's body is oxygen rich and nutrient rich. This is really the jet fuel of blood. There's nothing like it in our body at all. We don't have a single blood vessel that is this rich in nutrients and this rich in oxygen. Although you could make a case for two other blood vessels combined. This would be almost like the hepatic portal vein which carries nutrients from the digestive system to the liver and the pulmonary vein which is carrying oxygen back from the lungs. The blood bypasses much of the liver and goes directly to the vena cava and then very quickly into general circulation. When the blood merges into the vena cava it is combined with deoxygenated blood returning from the fetus's body. This blood can be thought of as partially oxygenated and it follows the regular path of blood through the heart. It can go down into the ventricle, the right ventricle, and th then up into the pulmonary arteries and then directly to the lungs where it picks up some carbon dioxide and returns back to the heart. But since oxygenation and gas exchange doesn't occur at the lungs, it doesn't make sense for all the blood that's just come in from the mother's body, which does contain fair amount more oxygen than the fetal blood return to the heart via the vena cava, it doesn't make sense for that blood to not go into general circulation immediately. So there's a hole in the heart, the foramen ovale, so that it can pass from the right side directly to the left side and then enter systemic circulation via the aorta. And the ductus arteriosus also helps the blood to bypass the lungs and enter the aorta and general circulation so that the oxygen can be delivered to the fetus's body tissues. It's not as oxygenated as it would be because some mixing has occurred on the right side of the heart and in the vena cava, but it's oxygenated enough to sustain the tissues. Now, there's a branch off the aorta that leads to the umbilical artery and back to the placenta where gas and nutrient exchange can take place. So we'll take a look at our modifications one more time. We have the foramen ovale, which allows the blood to bypass, at least partially bypass, pulmonary circulation and get right into general circulation so that oxygen can be delivered to the tissues. We have the ductus arteriosus, which uh, serves the same purpose as the foramen ovale. There's the ductus venosus, which actually does go through the liver for a reason. If you recall, the blood that's coming in from the mother's body, or the blood that's coming in from the placenta, is very nutrient rich, and the liver is responsible for processing those nutrients. So it makes sense to drop off those nutrients rather than put them into general circulation and wait for them to reach the liver. This is sort of like the hepatic portal vein in function. And finally we have the umbilical vein and the umbilical artery which act as a method to get the blood to and from the placenta where the fetus and mother's blood vessels interface. We can look at this schematically and see the same thing. If you look at the left side of the diagram it should look familiar. It looks like our pulmonary and systemic circulatory system 
double loop system, but you can also see the modifications, the foramen aval, the ductus arteriosus, the ductus venosus, and the umbilical artery. So if we were to follow the path of the blood here, starting at the placenta, the oxygen diffuses from the placental blood vessels into the fetal blood vessels, carbon dioxide and waste diffuses out of the fetus's bloodstream and into the mother's bloodstream. The oxygen-rich blood enters the umbilical vein and a bit of it goes to the liver to deliver nutrients and the rest bypasses the liver and enters the vena cava of the fetus, mixes with some of that deoxygenated blood, enters the right side of the heart, goes through regular pulmonary circulation to the lungs and then back again but some of it also bypasses pulmonary circulation, goes directly into systemic circulation via the foramen ovale, and then into the aorta. And remember that some of that blood that was heading for the lungs via the pulmonary artery also connects to the aorta via the ductus arteriosus, and this blood enters general circulation, delivering oxygen and nutrients to the tissues, and some of it shunts over to the placenta to pick up more oxygen and drop off wastes. That summarizes fetal circulation.